At this point, you should be becoming pretty much an expert on physical properties of matter. You understand that a physical property is something that can be observed without changing a substance to a different substance. And what that means is you are not changing the bonds between the atoms so that the substance fundamentally becomes something different. Like when you burn paper and it becomes something that's not paper any longer. That's a chemical property of paper that it will combine with oxygen and burn that is not a physical property. Physical properties are things like the size of the paper, the shape of the paper, the color, the density, things like that. In this lesson, we're going to continue to learn about physical properties as we learn about a unique characteristic of the matter that God created in his universe. It's very interesting to think that much of the matter that we see all around us exists in three primary states. Those are solids, liquids, and gases. You've probably learned about these three states before. You've been thinking about them ever since you were first able to explore your world as a baby. You've been processing matter and understanding that some things are solids, some things are liquids, and some things are gases. But now we're going to understand them from a high school perspective. We're going to understand how matter states are related to the kinetic theory of matter. And in this particular lesson, we're going to especially be focusing in on the solid state of matter. To get started with this, we're going to begin with a definition of what the kinetic theory of matter is. Because it sounds like it's something really complicated, but honestly it's not. The kinetic theory is just the statement that all particles of all substances everywhere are always moving in some way. The different states of matter have particles that move differently from one another, and that's part of what makes that state of matter the state that it is. It gives it its properties because of the way that the particles are moving. Additionally, the movement of particles gives an object its temperature. The faster the particles of an object move, the hotter an object is, and the slower they move, the colder an object is. So we're going to be putting those things together as we learn about the states of matter. And again, in this lesson, we're going to be learning about the solid state. So if all particles are moving all the time, why is it that when you look at a solid object, it doesn't look like it's moving at all? The reason is because just its particles are moving, and they're moving a tiny amount. And in fact, in a solid, the particles are actually vibrating about a fixed place. So the particles aren't actually sliding and moving from one place to another. They're just moving back and forth around a fixed point. And because your eyes can't see how tiny particles are, when they vibrate back and forth, your eyes don't even detect it. All you see is the big solid object maintaining its shape. Solids have two interesting characteristics because of the way their particles just vibrate around a fixed place. First of all, solids have a fixed volume. Here's what that means. If you take an ice cube, which is a solid, and you put it into an empty glass, it's not like that ice cube is just going to spread out and fill up the entire glass because it's in a big container. The ice cube is just going to plop to the bottom and remain taking up the same amount of space that it was when you dropped it. The ice cube is not going to expand. But doesn't that make sense? Because the particles of the ice cube are all vibrating around a fixed place. They're not going to be able to spread out and move away from that fixed place. The other characteristic of solids is that they have a fixed shape. The ice cube isn't going to slosh around and fill the bottom of the glass. It's going to remain the shape of an ice cube at the bottom of the glass. If an object doesn't change its shape and doesn't change its volume to fill its container, we're dealing with the solid state of matter. Here are some examples of things that are solids. And each of these three pictures shows you something a little bit different. First off, we have metal washers, which are quite obviously solids. I don't think anyone would question those obviously have a fixed volume 
in a fixed shape. But what about the powder on the right? Salt on a spoon. That salt is a powder made up of a bunch of different tiny fragments of crystals of salt. Each granule of salt is a solid with a fixed shape and a fixed volume. And when you put a whole bunch of granules of something together, it's a powder substance. Powders are solids too. And then finally, over on the left, the reason I have ice pictured here is because ice is a really interesting substance. Some solids are made by taking substances that are liquids and cooling them down enough that the particles come together and freeze. Those kinds of substances end up with a fixed volume and a fixed shape, even though the liquid before you froze it didn't have a fixed shape. It would just slosh around and fill its container. So liquid substances can be frozen to make solid substances. Maybe you're still wondering visually what's going on as these particles are vibrating. So let me show you a little demonstration of what a solid object might look like. Notice that these particles are moving, but they're not moving away from the place that they're in. They're staying near the same original place that they started. And that's what solid particles do. They move, they vibrate, but they don't actually move to an entirely new location. They stay in the same fixed spot. In physical science class, the way that I'm going to represent this for you is usually by showing you a bunch of atoms. I'm usually going to connect it with these lines in the background. These are called lattice lines. And they show the bonds that are holding the atoms together. Solid substances have bonds that are holding the atoms closely to each other, and that's why solids form, because the particles that make up the solid want to remain closely packed together. They don't want to just spread freely apart. So one more thing to think about. If a solid has its particles all fixed in place, then what happens when you heat up a solid? Because heating it up makes the particles move faster, correct? It absolutely does. As you heat up a solid, the vibrating particles begin to vibrate faster and faster. And as they vibrate faster and faster, your body is able to sense that as heat. You can sense that faster vibration as a higher temperature. If you vibrate the particle so fast that those bonds, that lattice, isn't able to hold them in place anymore, they're going to start moving past one another, but then they become a different state of matter. For now, just make sure you understand that solids are made up of particles that vibrate around a fixed point, that solids have a fixed volume because of that, and a fixed shape. That's the solid state of matter.